blah, 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 blah. Wait for the story, though. Today I'm here with my September wrap-up for 2018. I read a total of 14 books, but I already wrapped up the first seven of this month in my Emojiathon week one wrap-up. So if you guys want to check out the first seven books I read, then go to that video. But these are the last seven books that I read. So without further ado, let us get started. <sighs> The eighth book that I read for the month of September was The Merciless 2 by Danielle Vega. This is the sequel to The Merciless, which I really loved when I read it in 2015, I think. It was like one of my favorite books. The book follows the same main character, Sophia, who after months of it being plagued with hallucinations in her head from the exorcism gone wrong and the death of her three best friends that she's trying to piece her life back together. When her mother dies suddenly, she is sent to St. Mary's boarding school where she meets a very mysterious boy named Jude. As they get to know each other, Jude becomes convinced that Sophia is possessed by the devil and that she needs an exorcism in order for God to forgive her sins. So I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I did enjoy it. It was entertaining. It was a very fast read. I found it a little bit slow at the beginning. It wasn't very exciting until the actual exorcism happened. I thought it was very similar to the first book but I enjoyed the first book a lot more because I think it was such a novel experience for me to read. Since it felt very similar I wasn't that surprised by it. You know what I mean? I did really enjoy the cliffhanger at the end though so I do want to pick up the third book just to see where the story progresses from here. But yeah overall 3.5 it was good but not amazing. The next book I picked up was Highly Illogical Behavior by John Corey Whaley and I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars as well. It follows 16 year old Suleiman who after a very extreme panic attack three years ago became agoraphobic which means he never leaves his house. It also follows Lisa Prater who wants to attend the second best psychology program and in order to do so she needs to write an essay about her experience with mental illness. So she decides that her best bet to get into this program is to meet Solomon and basically fix him. I flew through this book. It's quite short and the writing style just flows very nicely. I loved Solomon as a main character. He is so self-aware and he is so honest with those who care about him which I think was really great. I loved his humor. I thought he was adorable. I wanted to protect him at all costs which leads me to my next point. It shouldn't really come to any surprise that I didn't like Lisa. She infuriated me and the way that she treated Solomon as like her little project really bothered me. I just found her to be very selfish, not only about Solomon, but also towards her boyfriend, Clark. I think Clark deserved so much better. I hated what she was doing to Solomon and I knew that when he found out, things were not gonna go well for him and it just really bothered me that she didn't take that into consideration. I did like how as the story progressed, she realized what she was doing was wrong and she developed as a character, so that was nice to see, but I still really hate that she thought it was okay in the first place. I did really like the alternating perspectives between Lisa and Solomon. I thought it was a really great way to see into the minds of both characters and why they were doing what they were doing. I also want to say that the family dynamics in this book are incredible. Solomon's parents and grandma are just so supportive of him. They don't try to push him into anything he's not ready for, but when he is ready, they're fully there to support him. The major problem I had with this book and why I only gave it 3.5 stars is the whole like fix the sick kid trope. I just really hate it especially when it comes to like the mental illness aspect of it. It just irks me so I couldn't I couldn't write it any higher in my opinion. I just was not here for that. The next book I have is called The Skin and it's by Adrian Maria Vretos. The book follows 14 year old Donnie who is struggling to keep his crumbling family together. His sister Karen is sick with an eating disorder, his parents are constantly fighting, and his social life at school is pretty much non-existent. Donnie decides that by becoming invisible to everyone around him is the best way in order to keep his crumbling family together. So I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I did really enjoy it. I thought it was very interesting to see the story from somebody who didn't actually have 
the eating disorder. It was very heavily focused on Karen, but through the eyes of Donnie. It was really interesting to see how Karen's disorder really influenced everybody around her. Right from the very beginning of the book, you know what happens to Karen and you instantly are sympathetic towards Donnie and you just want to protect him at all costs and throughout the entire story you know what's going to happen and it just breaks your heart for him. He is just so sweet and innocent and naive and I just want to hug him so badly. The prologue it definitely hooks you right in from the beginning. I definitely recommend it if you're interested in mental health books. I think that it's very short but very impactful for what it was and I just think that you guys should read it because it was really it was really nice. The next book I have is The Silent Wife and this is by ASA Harrison and I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars. It follows Todd and Jody, whose relationship is falling apart. As events unfold and decisions are made, Todd and Jody find themselves at a little battle about what they want in life. Things escalate and someone ends up dead and consequences need to be fulfilled. I personally found this book to be very addictive. I could not put it down. I just found it so interesting to see how in denial Jody was was and how selfish Todd was and how they both totally thought that it was okay. I really enjoyed the alternating perspectives between Jody and Todd. I thought it was a great way to see inside both characters minds and how they were dealing with the whole ordeal. A lot of people who have reviewed this book said it was kind of boring to them but I personally listen to it on audiobook so maybe that changed the experience for me. But personally I found it very addictive so I definitely recommend it if you guys are into like slow burn psychological thrillers. This was a really great one. The next book I have is Wrecked by Maria Payton and I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars. After returning from a party one night, Haley can see that her roommate Jenny is very shaken up but she doesn't know why. Across campus, Richard's roommate Jordan is bragging about hooking up with a freshman at the party. So when Jenny accuses Jordan of rape, Richard and Haley are put on opposite ends of the investigation. I definitely think that this is one of the best books regarding sexual assault awareness that I've read so far. I think that it did a really good job looking at certain themes and topics that are relevant to the topic in a way that wasn't preacher and in your face. It was done very subtly. It not only discussed rape culture but also victim blaming and consent and I just think that it was done so well. The mix of humor and seriousness thrown into the story was very well balanced. I think that it evened out very well and it still got the message across without, like I said, being preachy and in your face. I also really liked how the story was told from the roommate's perspective instead of the rape victim and the person being accused of the rape. I also really liked how we got flashbacks from Jenny's perspective in the story as well between each chapter. I think that that was a really unique twist on the way that stories about this topic are usually told. It's honestly just so mind-boggling to me that this actually happens in real life like the victim's story and her words can be so easily twisted and the perpetrator can just walk free with no consequences it was just honestly heartbreaking because Jenny's story is so similar to a lot of the victims of sexual assault and what actually happens to them. The next book that I picked up was Mosquito Land by David Arnold and I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I really really liked it. It follows Mary Iris Malone who goes by Mim. She is forced to move across Ohio with her dad and new stepmom and that's when she discovers that her mom is sick and she decides that she's going to hop on a gray bus in order to go and visit her back in Cleveland. I definitely did not expect to like this book as much as I did. The characters are really what shine for me in this story. They're all just so unique with their own personalities and flaws and they're just so lovable and relatable. I couldn't help but smile throughout the entire book with the interactions that they had together. I found Mim to be so witty and funny and she just cared so fiercely about everybody who is important to her. Walt was also a great addition to the story. He was just so precious and a little cinnamon roll and I just wanted to protect him at all costs and I just wanted what was best for him. I also really liked Beck and his relationship with Mim and I liked how he set boundaries right at the beginning and was like, girl I'm too old for you but like call me in five years when you're not 16. I just think that it kind of showed how mature he was because honestly most boys would just be like, Okay. Age doesn't matter, girl. Mm. 
I love you. But he was like, nah, we, we ain't going to jail today. I just thought that every misadventure that the three of them got themselves into were just so funny and obviously half of the things that happened in this book would never happen in real life but that's just what made it so much better in my opinion. The book definitely does not feel like a debut novel so I'm very excited to check out more of David Arnold's work in the future. I know he wrote Kids of Appetite. It was actually mentioned in this book which I thought was kind of cool. Haven't read it yet but definitely gonna pick it up. And then the final book that I picked up was I Am Still Alive by Kate Marshall and I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It follows Jess Cooper who is left all alone in the wilderness after witnessing her father's murder and her cabin that she lived in burning to the ground. And now with only the company of Bo who is her father's dog, she needs to survive the winter and wait for these men to return so that she can get her revenge. Although it was entertaining at times, I thought that it was very slow. A lot of the story is just Jess complaining about her predicament, which like, understandable. Like you just saw your dad die and now you're stuck in the wilderness in the middle of nowhere by yourself with a dog and you have no idea how to survive but there you go. Like, it's understandable, but it just got very repetitive after a while. The best part of the story was Bo. He was so cute, and I loved how the author made him very humanistic in his mannerisms. It's humanistic a word, we're going with it, but he was just so lovable and cute, and he just deserved so much better. That's all I'm gonna say. I also really loved Griff. I thought he was the best and I wish that we got more Griff in the story. I did like the writing style. It was very easy to read. I liked the alternating timelines between before and after and how it eventually merged into the present timeline and how Jess got to where she was was very interesting. I do think that the ending was a little bit anticlimactic for my liking. I wish there was a little bit more, so I was a little bit disappointed about that. But if you guys are into like true survival stories, this is definitely one that you guys should pick up. All right, guys. So that was the last seven books that I read this month. If you're interested in the first seven books, go check out my Emojiathon week one wrap up. Let me know down below if you guys have read any of these, what you thought of them, and I'll see you all in my next video. Goodbye.